So tell me, do you drive around with books in your car just in case you spot a little free library when you're out and about? Do you use the new little free library map app where it shows where you are and then you can search in your vicinity to see what little free libraries are near you so that when you're running errands or on a trip, you can find the little free libraries in that area? So in this video, I'm going to share my latest Little Free Library haul. It's 15 books. And I am also going to just share a couple clips of some Little Free Libraries that I stopped at on my way to an author event that I was able to attend. I was able to see Dr. Christy Purifoy speak about the art of placemaking and then also sign my books. I actually have every book that she has written. I was fortunate enough to be on her launch team for one of them and so I brought them all to this event and got her to sign them. I kind of stumbled to the stairs and then I, I, I realized that the stairwell was just flooded in light and I just sat down right there on that step and looked up because um, there's, there was a big window at the turning of the stairs, a Victorian two over two window and centered in this window was this enormous full moon and talk about a welcome home. <laughs> I think I knew then that this was not just a house, whatever we mean when we say not just a something, right? This house had been shaped and planned and placed with care. Some person had done that, you know, checked their compass, watch, watch for the rising of the moon and the setting of the sun and marked out the boundaries for this place and figured out where that window needed to go. And now I, 130 years later, um, I'm receiving that careful work of their hands and it, it felt like a gift. Dr. Christy Purifoy is the author of Roots in Sky, A Journey Home in Four Seasons. So in Roots in Sky, she signed it for everything. There is a season. It is a memoir that focuses on Christian growth and it is divided up into the four seasons of starting in autumn. And it's something that I love to read every year just on a cycle. Then next we have Placemaker, Cultivating Places of Comfort, Beauty, and Peace. This was the book that I was fortunate enough to be on the launch team for. And she actually used trees for each chapter as the theme to then dive deeper into how we can be placemakers. And she signed it, We Are Placemakers. And then this is her latest book. It is called Garden Maker, Growing a Life of Beauty and Wonder with Flowers. It is different than the other two, but the thing that I love about it is it has photos from her own garden, flower garden. It has her own experiences in gardening. The end papers I just think are so beautiful. And she signed it, we are garden makers. So I really enjoyed going to see Dr. Christy Purifoy talk. It was so enjoyable to get to hear her affirmation, but also her convictions and just encouragement to be placemakers and what that means. Thank you. 
Okay, so for the books, I'm gonna go ahead and start with middle grade and then move into adult. So the first one we grabbed is The Book of Dragons and this is illustrated by Michael Haig. I love Michael Haig. If you can ever find books that are illustrated by Michael Haig, I cannot recommend them enough. We actually have his unicorn one that's like this. We have some Christmas ones that are like this. So this has selected stories about dragons. C.S. Lewis in The Voyage of the Dawn Treader uh, with The Adventures of Eustace. Perseus and Andromeda written by Patrick Cullum. There is Bilbo Baggins that's pulled out of The Hobbit by Tolkien. We've got Elizabeth Nesbitt, Kenneth Graham, Andrew Lang who wrote the fairy books, The Brothers Grimm, and more. That's why I kind of put it in the middle grade uh, category because even though it's a picture book, the stories that they're pulled from are typically middle grade level reading. The Black Arrow by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a historical fiction that is set in the War of the Roses between Lancaster and York. It is an Abeka book, which is a homeschool publisher. And I think it's been edited a little bit, but it did look like the language in it was stayed pretty true to the style that Robert Louis Stevenson had written, so I grabbed that. Then we got Lloyd and Alexander's The Arcadians. He is the Newbery Medal winner for The High King. I've read that whole series. And this is a story about a donkey that's under a spell that I think is was once a human. And they are going on a trip through, the, through Arcadia. It's a fantasy. It has magic and villains and prophecy and shipwrecks and travel. Okay, I grabbed Theseus and the Minotaur. This is written by Barefoot Books, which is also a homeschool publisher. And this is illustrated as well as having the, the Greek myth of Theseus and, Minotaur, and the Minotaur. The Golden Compass, this is by Philip Pullman. This is a movie, I know, I've actually seen it, but my daughter saw this and thought she'd wanna read the book. She has not yet seen the movie. So this is a story about a girl who lives in a university basically and her uncle arrives and ends up entangling her with a witch and armored bears and children that get stolen the little mouse is so cute so she ends up going to the north and she is um has a destiny to fulfill in overthrowing this witch Next, my youngest grabbed this Artemis Fowl. So again, this is also a movie. It's a Disney movie that just came out. This is by Ian Colfer. And this is the story about a boy named Artemis Fowl. He is super smart and super wealthy. He has bodyguards at his service. I think there's one particular one that he's especially close with, but his father, is missing and he ends up kidnapping a fairy to be able to figure out what is is going on my son loved the movie so much and there's also like these kind of designs at the bottom and because it's a free library what do we have to lose so this i was my daughter picked this up so she loves birds she loves the story of the phoenix and this is a purple house press published book which I follow on Instagram. They seem to have a heart for publishing books that are out of print, uh, but are, you know, we don't want to lose them. They're special books. So when she showed me this as an option, jumped at it. So we got this, and honestly, I will probably read this one too. Another one that I'm going to read is Roller Skates by Ruth Sawyer. I have read her Oh, it's a Christmas story about a girl named Maggie. I can't recall what it's called, the title of it right now. But this one is Roller Skates, and this one is a Newberry. I just love the old cover design. So this is the story about Lucinda, and it seems like it's a coming-of-age story. I think her family travels 
to Europe and she stays back in New York and roller skates everywhere and she develops a relationship with an older gentleman and uh, she's the trope, the typical trope of she's a tomboy but is supposed to be learning how to be a lady and it's, I think it's the turn of the century of into the 1900s or close to it. And then next by Dick King Smith, he wrote Babe, also a movie, uh, which I think is kind of odd. And I haven't read Babe the story, so I don't know if the movie is just odd, but he his stories may just be very well odd. But anyway, the story of this is Henrietta Hickathrift is an, living in an old person's home and doesn't want to do it anymore. So she runs away on her 75th birthday, which I love. Um, and she meets five children who insist on taking her home for a proper birthday party. And then she ends up staying after the birthday party for a night and then a month and she is just kind of looking for a home so such an interesting idea right of like a, somebody older is the stray okay so that's it for middle grade next i have the adult ones so i found pachinko by min Li, min jin lee this is the story about Sunja, who falls in love with a Korean from her town, she's Korean, and he's, I think he's like in a different social level than her. She ends up pregnant and he does not agree to marry him, her. And so she ends up marrying a minister who I think is passing through on his way to Japan. You know, and the minister takes on her child as his own and so this is her story of living in Japan and kind of the trajectory that her life went on when she decided to leave her home fishing village so I mean it is a chunker it's almost 500 pages okay next I have the orphan train by Christina Baker Klein I have heard so much about this book and so I was excited to be able to grab it this is set in the turn of the century from the 1850s until the 1930s where there were orphan trains that regularly ran from the East Coast cities to the farmlands of the Midwest carrying thousands of abandoned children you know, it's just like anything. You could end up with a lucky ticket and ha be with a really great family, or the converse is true and you would end up in a really bad situation with hard labor and kind of being a servant. And so Vivian Daly is an Irish immigrant who is sent on the rail and she ends up back on the East Coast when she gets older and it looks like a girl who is there to help this elderly woman, Vivian has grown up, helps her clean out her attic. They discover that they have a lot in common with being shipped back and forth. But I do like the back matter has information about the real orphan trains. This was another one that I found. It's called The Unanswered Letter by Ferris Cassell. And this is the story of in 1939, there are Jewish people living in Vienna and they send a letter to Americans that have their same last name. And after languishing in an attic for decades, this letter resurfaces in the hands of the author. And so she went on a journey to find out what happened to the family who had reached out for help. You know, did they survive? Did they have descendants? And this is her journey in that. And this is also a long book, but just seems so interesting to me. I obviously love historical fiction. This one is not historical fiction. The People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I grabbed this, I mean, I've seen it come through on booktube. And so I went ahead and just grabbed it thinking this summer when we go on vacation, I'll read it. It's probably not one that I'll wanna keep on my shelf. So I'll read it and then find a little free library and pass it on. The next one is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I don't know if I'm going to read this one or the next one, but that's the beauty of a little free library is I have books that I'm not going to read anymore that I am ready to donate. And so it's no skin off my nose to just grab a book that I wouldn't normally check out of the library, I wouldn't normally buy to just maybe give it a chance and see. And if I don't like it and I DNF it, I can always just pass it on and find something else. So again, I've heard so much about this, I think 
My biggest concern about it is the gore. You know, it talks about creepy, chilling scenes of horror with classic gothic tropes. So not my typical read, but again, I saw it and so I grabbed it. And then <laughs> last, I just got this one recently. This is the last one that I got and it is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I have not read any Riley Sager books. I know, I think Home Before Dark is one that I've seen come through a lot. It's a book of the month hardcover with a really nice dust jacket. I mean, it's in really great shape. The book of the month thrills and chills section. Again, not my normal genre. I will have to see if I can handle it <laughs> because if it gets too creepy and scary, I will bail. But again, it's not a big investment for me to just trade in a book I've already read and I'm not keeping for something that I would not normally seek out. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what of the books that I've mentioned you've read and would suggest that I put to the top of the pile or that you've read and would suggest that I put it back into a little free library and get something different. Until next time.